Hello, comrades, and welcome back to Shanka Show. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи. So today, comrade Sergey, hey, it rhymes, will answer one of your questions. And the question is from Orson Welles. His question, hello, Sergey, have you thought about doing a video where you would discuss how you differently your life might have turned out if you, for whatever reason, decided to remain in the Soviet Union slash Ukraine to this day instead of emigrating? Well, it's quite an interesting and challenging question, but first of all, I would like to mention that fact that I wouldn't remain in the Soviet Union because Soviet Union got dissolved in 1991. I came to America first time in 1995. And I stayed in the United States in 1998. If you're interested to find out about my initial experience of arriving to America, you can purchase my book, American Diaries, 1995. Link is below this video. It just recently got published in English. I had it already done in Russian a couple of years ago. And now back to your question. Well, first of all, I would like to mention that I never planned to emigrate. It's all happened almost like by accident. Well, this is what happens when you go on a blind date and you end up getting stuck in Michigan. But initially, when I found out about the exchange program, Camp Counselors USA, I just wanted to come to America and explore because the program at that time was pretty decent. They uh, paid for your tickets, they find you a camp, and uh, the participation in the program was like $350 at that time in 1994. And camp will pay you back $350. So there was opportunity to visit America for free. And of course, I was kind of like, well, they pay $5 an hour in the United States. I make $20 a month here in Ukraine. So maybe there is a chance I might find some kind of side job or whatever to make extra cash besides working in a summer camp. And honestly, I was so happy to go back to Ukraine after I was done with my uh, summer work at the camp. And then I worked at the farm picking apples. And I worked a lot, like every single day. We're talking about at the farm seven days a week, like 10, 11 hours every day. Because, you know, amount of money they were paying, I was making two monthly salaries every single day. So I was just like, geez, that's my chance to you know, get ahead and make some decent money because I wasn't sure if I'll be able to come back again another year. And I'm pretty much come up with a plan to come to America for four or five years, work at the f camp, work at the farm, bring all the money home. Then probably by age of 30, I'll be able to save enough money to buy my own apartment, get married and live in Kiev. But I met my future wife on a blind date here in Michigan, and all my plans drastically changed. It happened in 1998. So if I would come back, I, my goodness, that's a tough one. First of all, I would like to say I probably won't be, like, super successful back in Kiev because for the conditions in Ukraine, I'm, like, too honest to be a successful businessman. If you know what I mean. So I'll probably be doing okay. All my friends said, oh, you'll be doing fine even if you stayed. Because, you know, I was studying English. I had a degree. I was always tight with money. Like, you know, I see here, like, Dave Ramsey makes tons of money giving this really, like, basic financial advices. Something like, hey, don't spend more money than you make. Put some money aside. All that stuff is like obvious to me, so I've always was had money behind and stuff like that. So I don't think I'll be in bad shape, but I don't think I'll have anything close to what I have here in America. You know, I go home back to Kiev. I mean, home is here now in Michigan, but I go back to original home to visit my parents and my brother. And, you know, I meet my uh, former schoolmates and I see how they're doing and they're not doing that hot. I mean, I have a couple of friends that they got a decent job. It's like one guy worked for um, Western Union and some other uh, foreign bank. So he got pretty nice apartment, uh, car, doing financially pretty well. Uh, but most of my friends, 
Uh, they can't afford to buy their own apartment, so they share apartments with their parents. Uh, one of my friends, like there's three families live in the three room apartment. So the apartment has three rooms, not just bedrooms, three rooms total. So one is like my friend and his wife and three kids, other room, his in-laws, and then third room, it's his brother-in-law and his two kids and wife. So yeah, the housing situation is pretty, pretty rough there. It's very expensive comparing to what people make. But at the same time, it's kind of funny, you know, I come to from America and um, it was several years ago. So they will be asking me, hey, what kind of cell phone do you have? And at that time I had that flip phone Motorola, you know, we're talking early 2000s probably. And they look at me in the shack and they oh, look at my Sony Walkman cell phone. So they have this $300, $400 cell phones while they share apartments, their in-laws. So they have no problem to spend monthly salary or maybe two monthly salaries to buy a cool cell phone. And here's me in America making 10 times more money than them. And I'm having a flip phone because it's just a phone, you know, for me, just I need to make a phone call. I need to receive a phone call. And another thing I don't understand, like uh, all my friends, they remain in Kiev, despite this housing is so expensive and they live in this horrible cramped apartment. I mean, apartment's not horrible, but if you have three families sharing one apartment, it's pretty rough. While, you know, I saw, uh, showed you guys like villages out north, up north in Ukraine, like you can buy a house for 500 bucks, you know, for the price of a cell phone. And you can have a house to yourself. You can have a plot of land. I mean, you won't be doing that hard, but you can initially get a tractor, do some farming. They don't want to do that. So that's kind of strange. So they prefer to stay in the city instead of just move out maybe and uh, improve their living conditions. So in my case, you know, we're looking at two scenarios. If I never would come to America, like if, if I would never find a this exchange program, I would still have my English because I was studying English before that. So I probably would be maybe still share an apartment with my parents, but probably just have some little apartment on my own, married, having a kid, you know, just working in maybe some foreign company. Uh, second scenario, if I'll be moving, going back and forth, making decent money in America, bringing cash home, I will have a nicer apartment, maybe a car, and my English would be even better. So maybe I'll work, I don't know, for American embassy or some kind of foreign bank or I don't know what else, because with my elect electrical engineering degree, there's really not many jobs. So I think I'll be doing okay, but not uh, to the level what I have here in America. I mean, I still have to work really hard. I do a lot of overtime. Anytime, you know, there's overtime, I take it. Uh, I don't never say no to overtime. And for a long time, when I worked for my in-laws in the furniture store, I was working every single day, but Saturday from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m., Sundays from noon till five. So I was uh, raking a lot of hours, but you know, you do what you have to do. You know, I, you just have to work because skills pay bills. And as you know, I kind of see it on, in positive way because of my decision to move to America just to work an exchange program or later, you know, by staying here. I tried so many different things. There's no way I would try those different professions back in Kiev. I mean, I did some crazy stuff like smuggling vodka to Poland. Uh, I was unloading semi trucks with beer and pop. I was selling vodka and sneakers in kiosk on night shift, making $2 per night. So I did some crazy stuff there. But here I work in the moving. I work in remodeling. I learned how to sell carpet, how to measure for flooring. Uh, so I learned a lot of cool skills that I would never learn back in Ukraine. So I'm very grateful for all those opportunities. I mean, I work at Best Buy for a while. Uh, my goodness. <laughs> and now I have YouTube channel, you know, so I wrote a book. So there's a lot of interesting challenges when you move to a different country in America. You know, it's if you don't mind to work hard, if you're careful with your money, You'll be doing okay even if you're immigrant.
Well, I hope I answer your question. If you have any additional questions, you guys are welcome, of course, to post your comments and questions below this video. And I would like to thank everyone who supports my channel on Patreon.com. It's great help because YouTube is pretty much automatically blocks almost all my videos before they go live. Then I have to manually request review. And by the time uh, they will review the video, it will go through 1,000 or 2,000 views. So my first initial uh, you know, peak of views goes completely without any monetization. Then they may decide to let it monetize and may not. I still got quite a bit of videos. They uh, have a limited monetization or none because of topics like one of my latest videos I made about anti-American uh, propaganda posters from Soviet Union. That video had no chance. I mean, I worked a lot to make it, to translate it. And uh, YouTube said, nope, our advertisers are not interested to advertise on such videos. So thank you so much for supporting me and we will talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. Hey, by the way, the cool merch for cool comrades is available at the Oshanka store at teespring.com. And if you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet Union.